Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 69 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where today, I'm going to pop into my mining dimension here, and find that my frame miner is mining! <gasps> How'd you do, Darwell? How'd you do that one? Uh, I finally found a mod that's happily being moved with frames and supports chunk loading, so I think we now have a moving create system. I've had this running for the last few minutes here. Um, and I'm going to get on out of here. Boy, do I fly slow without a jetpack, huh? Come on, buddy. I want to beat I want to beat the thing up. Let's go. Woo! If I pop home and open up my ender pouch, what we should see in a moment is this thing filling up. Uh, maybe uh, 30 seconds or so. So what mod did Dyer grab to get this to work? It is a lovely little mod. And by little, I mean it adds one block. A single chunk loader from the mod Chunk No Go Bye Bye. Uh, a Lex Manos mod, of all things. It's a very simple chunk loading mod. It adds vanilla's. Oh, look, there it all is. Uh, vanilla added a command, I think in either 115 or 116, to force load a chunk. So basically, this block, when placed, executes that command in that chunk and keeps it loaded. Uh, and I assume it removes it when it gets removed, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, so questions uh number one it's not a tile entity it's really a simple block so even though the, the 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 frame system that i've built can move tile entities this single chunk loader is not a tile entity it's a simple block so it doesn't even need that uh which is really cool and thus far it seems to be working like look it's already part way through the next mining cycle um, despite the fact that I was out of the chunk area, like we left and it was down at the bottom. While I was gone, it pulled the whole rope system up, dumped everything into the ender chests, and then uh, started moving forward a block, did so, and started mining the next set. So how did I do this, right? I wanted to make sure that we would cover all possible scenarios. So what I've got is the following. Uh, I've got a chunk loader back here, because if you look, this back platform is pretty self-contained for the most part all within one chunk so i think we're pretty safe there um so i guess it's like feasibly feasibly possible that something could be wonky with this so if i really wanted to i could throw one more on the front here maybe like this uh that way and because it's not glued to this guy right he, he won't be pulled forward but he will move forward with the other one but it's it's this is all within one chunk from the left to the right, that is one chunk. So it can, while moving forward, split among two chunks. Uh, now this part of the system is unfortunately in two chunks. I should have been smarter and built it into one, but it's not a big deal. So what I did is I made sure that there was a chunk loader on the back left corner, and then also on the back right corner to cover the two back halves. So this is like a good example, right? Like this chunk line right here, we are between chunks. So we wanna be careful about that. So you know, we want to cover both the back half and the back other half, right? Left and right half. And then also the front half. Now we want to make sure that we cover, because eventually this will pass into a boundary such that this row of blocks is in one chunk and the other, you know, rest of it's not. So what I did is I added a few blocks here and put the chunk loader above it. Now I could have, you're probably thinking, put the chunk loader on the pulley system. But remember, when the pulleys engage, they turn into entities, right? And they stay entities until they come all the way back up. So I don't want, um, I don't know if these work as entities. I tried this one iteration with the, the chunk loaders on the moving pulley system and it didn't work so hot. And then it occurred to me, well, if I do it like this, they'll be in block form while the pulley's running. And that might be cool. And so far it has been. So what I did is I just connected up, you know, this stuff so that we have uh, chunk loaders remaining as blocks in the position, the vertical, the, the horizontal position, I guess, or the vertical, depending on how you look at it, uh, of the pulleys. So that's pretty neat. And then the same thing replicated over here. So it's just, it's, it's pushed forward over the lip so that it lines up with the pulley part. How cool is that? Is that a good idea? And it worked out because this has run for, I want to say, five or six iterations now without issue. Uh, and that's pretty spiffy. I'm very pleased about how this is working. So see, look, it comes up and it's 
the, the chunk loaders kind of line up. And there's no parts of this frame system that are in front of these chunk loading blocks. So in a worst case scenario, like when it gets here, right, the whole frame contraption will be here, but the drills that go up and down will be in this chunk. And those chunk loaders on the very front there will cover that. And I don't think that there's a situation that this thing can run into where it won't be covered in some way, shape or form. So how great is that? Sweet, right? So here we go, whole system moving, you're doing good. Um, and it doesn't hurt to probably have an extra chunk loader in there. So it's, you know, it, when in doubt, place a, an extra one rather than potentially place less. So that's good news for our moving contraption here. Um, the What I did between episodes is I played a lot with the different mods that can generate resources, right? And there's a handful in the pack. There's there's the there's the lasers from Metro Four going, right? Uh, there's um, there's environmental tech. Uh, uh, there's Batania has the orchid, right? So I checked out the orchid from Batania. I was like, yeah, oh, maybe this is kind of worth doing. It does cover all modded ores, but unfortunately it doesn't get uranium. It doesn't generate uranium, even though it says it does. It says it'll generate uranium, right? So like if we looked up uranium, this is funny too, right? It doesn't actually produce uranium. I ran it a lot. What it does produce, which is really funny, is Yellorium, which doesn't exist in JEI. So Yellorium isn't supposed to be generated in the world. I assume uranium is taking its place, but because the orchid generates Yellorium, it doesn't get processed in mechanism machines, so we can't quintuple it, which, you know, right now we're only tripling, obviously, but still, at some point I'd like to quintuple, and it's better than doubling, which is all you can get with Yellorium. So that was weird. Uh, there's a couple other things I tried. Nothing jumped out at me as, like, super great and fun. So then I started saying, like, is there any way I can make this work? Because at least this is cool. Right. What I'd like to do is see if I can speed this up in some way, shape or form, because I'm not sure that I can. Uh, I'd love to be able to, but I don't know. So let's let's see if we can. I'm curious of one or two things and we might we might wind up playing with and testing this today. So what I'm going to do is turn off the, the lever there, head on back. And let's look at, you know, from create what we could do to speed this up. Now, if you think about it, it takes what a second to move the platform forward, and then it takes three to four minutes to go all the way down and all the way back up, right? So what if, and I'm not saying this is doable, but it might be, what if we added multiple drill heads horizontally in front of the thing, such that it's mining instead of one column at a time, like two, three, four, five, six columns at a time. And then rather than moving one block forward, we configure the timer here to move six blocks forward. Would that be feasibly possible? Maybe? I bet if we timed it right, it should be doable. Um, I'm not sure if there's a limit to how many blocks Create can move with its whole you know, system here. There's probably a limit, but I don't know what that is. And uh, I don't know. So that's one way we could consider doing it. Because if I added another, another, at least one row, it would literally double. Oh my goodness, that scared me. That was a literal jump scare. That was loud. Why was that so loud? I feel like that was loud. Whew. That'll get your heart going. Did anybody else jump scare? Let me know. Because that literally scared me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to we'll have to see. So like that's one option, right? So we could literally just get a bunch more linear chassis. We don't even have to use linear chassis, to be honest with you, with this. We really don't. We could just do it with literally, you know, smooth stone or cobblestone or bricks or whatever. Um, because as long as we use the glue, because we need glue anyway, right? Really the benefit of the linear chassis is if you're going to have more than one block being moved underneath it. So I don't know. That's one approach we could try. Let me think about that one. All right, so what I did is I came home and I made <clears throat> two stacks of drills. Let's go augment our mining machine here with said drills. And what I'm gonna do, let's, let's keep it simple at first. And what we, uh, I should be careful about this because my glue ran out mid break there. Oh good, no, you're cool. Okay. I'm 
Am I missing something here? That's weird, right? Isn't that weird? I feel like that's weird. Let's just add a few drills and see how it goes. And then we will decide. What I'm going to do also is just have a manual lever here. I remember you being a nuisance, so I'm just going to put you here. Alright, so that's pretty cool. Alright, I'm not bad. That seems good. So then let's go... What I'm probably going to want to do then is remove these chunk loaders from the front. And if I'm going to... Let's bring it out three for now, and we'll see if that's sufficient. So realistically, not there, but here is where we're going to want this guy, right? So, so basically plus two in it. Yeah. So we'll be ready with all the chunk loading. Yeah, I love these chunk loaders. They're super simple blocks and they are great. When in doubt, super simple is the way to go. So we'll expand this out and we'll basically, this will in theory triple the speed at which this thing digs, right? Now the, the concern that we should have is do we have enough chest space? Because remember we were using about half our chest space and that did not go well. Okay, good enough. So let's get a couple more glues. Right, uh, so chest space might be a further concern for us. So I should probably get some more chests. I wish that, you know, larger chests worked on the thing, like iron chests and whatnot, but for some reason they don't. Now, uh, I don't think the pack has updated since I built this thing, so it's not even worth saying, hey, maybe it works now, because I don't think that would be the case. Um, So we'll see. All right, so now you guys are all good. So let's get drills going on. Having glue in the offhand is 100% the right way to do this. Whee! More drills. And remember, this is slightly less than 64 blocks of width, so it should be okay. I should have enough drills. All right, so let's see how much bananas this becomes. So the whole thing moves, so that's good. Uh, my concern then would be we want to make sure... Um, that chests are gonna be groovy. So let's throw down enough chests here and see, you know, what our average looks like. And we might have to just, you know, expand this out a little bit. So we'll see, but like, let's let's stick with that. Um, yeah. If I expand it beyond here, then what we're gonna wanna do is include the back area chunk loaded as well in this chunk. So, Let's see how this goes. Uh, and we'll decide if we need more chests than that. That's pretty good. Doing pretty good there. You know what? I didn't move him forward, did I? So let's bring you up one. And then I assume that you guys are all emptying. Yeah, nice. Cool. So let's move you forward a couple, right? So what we're gonna wanna do is, maybe I should try the programming here, right? Cause you are a delay of what, 70 ticks? So, trying to decide how that works out. Cause we do need a long delay here. 
I wouldn't mind. Because I don't want it to be, because 70 is what? Three and a half seconds? So it'd be three and a half seconds, three and a half seconds off, three and a half seconds on, three and a half seconds off, three and a half seconds on. So it would take like a good 30 seconds to move forward. I'd like to trim that down if I can. Um, what I could have is another sequencer. That might be cool. So check this out. This is my plan for this. And this should work if brain is not lying to me. But what if we move this back one? Okay. So this sequencer comes back one. Boom, like that. And he's got the same settings. And now you, what you're gonna do is when you receive a redstone signal from the back, I want you to execute the following, right? So when a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once, ignore further pulses. Uh, loop the cycle once, restart if new pulse arrives. I like that. Yeah, that's probably what we want. Um, so your delay should be 20, right? So that's one second. So when you receive a redstone signal, I want you to on, off, on, off, on, off, and then stay off. And then when you get a new redstone pulse, it'll restart. Cool. So check this out. What this should do is it should go move forward three spaces. And basically with this setup, if I want to add another row, I just add another enablement, right? So let's try it. So what he should do is he should trigger when he hits, um, do I need him on? Do I need him to stay on? I might need him to stay on because he's loop four, restart on no signal. Okay, yeah, so stay on. So then you're gonna go boop, boop. You can go off now, by the way. So he might be too long. Yeah, he definitely seems too long. Or too short, I mean. And I pretty much want this removed, which is harder to do than it looks. There you go. Cool. So yeah, let's bump this up. So you guys are actually a little bit stuck here. Why are you stuck? There you go, fixed. All right, so we want this to be a longer delay. So what if we made it 40? Would that be fair? Cool. Yeah, that feels really good, right? And then it's off the rest of the time. So that's three iterations forward. I like that a lot, right? So there's there's your there's your number, right? So it takes two seconds to move the whole frame platform properly. So by doing that, right, now we have a second controller, the sequencer here, will determine how many steps forward it moves when this thing fires. And the timing here remains the same for the most part. We might need to bump it up a little bit because we're not accounting for that. And we will also have to do something over here to account for this guy. So what are you set to? You're set to, when a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once, restart if new pulse arrives. And your timer delays. So what if I did this, right? So by doing this, it means that it's gonna wait a full 10 seconds before starting. So what'll happen here is it'll restart that timer, um, right? Cause this is gonna pulse, right? But when it when a new pulse arrives, right? Cause it's gonna go off and on again. 
Yeah, that should make sense. I think that should be cool, right? Let's watch this just to be sure, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Well, let's test this bit first, right? Let's test the whole mine straight down guy. So that's going pretty good. Not bad. And he'll be three times faster then, right? I wish I could make him even faster, but I'm pretty sure we're at max speed here with this shaft. All right, I've been, I've been, I've been mucking about with a few things, so let's try this. We're going to move it forward, and we're going to keep an eye on the redstone signal that's going to emit here. Now, I'm going to have to watch it with this guy to be sure, but it should be good. Right? So he's off. Right, now when he moves forward one, which hopefully works because I just messed with something that hopefully won't break it. Good, it did move. Yay. Right, and then it moves again, and he's still at step zero. And then it's going to move again, and then he's going to be at step zero again, right? And then we should be cool. Maybe? Looked like there was a step on there for a second. It didn't it? Didn't it look like there was a step on there for a second? Kinda did. And, oh, you guys didn't move. Rip. I'm gonna have to fix that. Yes. Told you I was playing with things. See, and this is actually a good example of why you need this at the front here, right? We're literally on a chunk boundary, so these drills would not be loaded. These two drills would. So by doing this, we're kind of confirming that we will definitely handle that situation, right? So there's your good example of why I'm doing exactly what I'm doing. All right, let's test to make sure everything moves forward again. So I'm gonna restart you. And then we're gonna keep an eye on this to make sure that he never goes on, right? So what should happen is he should move forward and he should go back to step zero, right? Um, after the redstone flicker. I would expect. Come on, Chief. Okay. Step one on. So then over here to watch. This should be moving now. There it goes. So he should reset to step zero. And then before he hits step one, he's gonna, so why did he hit step one there? I feel like he hit step one a little sooner than he should have, right? Cause it's a 200 tick delay. It's a 10 second delay. He should not have hit step one that quickly, but that's okay. Uh, what I will do is this, and that will definitely guarantee we definitely don't hit step two, right? And then now when we hit step two, he's on, cool. And then he'll stay on for moving. That works. All right, so now let's simulate this going. Beautiful. All right, so the chunk loaders all moved appropriately. The drills are behaving themselves. Cool. Now let's test chest storage. So we'll see if chests can store enough stuff. And then I might even consider adding another row or two. So I'm gonna go make more drills real quick uh, and we'll be right back. All right, so it looks like this whole thing's done. So chest wise, we didn't do too bad. Not, not too shabby, right? We got up to about this one with three empties. Okay. Okay. I think that's reasonable. Um, so if I really wanted to extend the chests, which I could absolutely do and shouldn't be too big of a deal to do, um, we could handle that. We, need, we definitely need more item routers, which shouldn't be a big deal. Um, but other than that, yeah, this is, this is doable. Let me get more item routers and let me remember exactly what's inside you guys. Uh, so you've got stack, speed, puller, and sender mark ones. Stack, speed, puller, and sender mark ones. Hey. So we're going to want more stack upgrades. Hey, more gold nuggets, please. Really? I think I know how to make bricks though, at least this time. Yeah. 
and a bunch of speed upgrades. I'll get another stack of you, maybe, or at least as close to a stack as I can get. Oh, we're low on gunpowder. Huh, of all things. Well, not a big deal. All right, let me craft this stuff. I'll be right back. All right, so when we're sending, we're sending to the left. And when we're pulling, we're pulling from the right. Yes? Cool. All right. So let's get this guy up. Boop. And then our next thing to test is if this timing still works the same. Because I'm not sure. It seems like it's a little bit slower to mine. Not three times slower to mine, but it definitely seems a little bit slower. So that's something that we should, you know, be aware of. Uh, but let's break you then. Let's make sure that we've got glue on both sides. Boop, 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 boop. All right, cool. So what we're going to want, I'm going to offhand you. And we're going to go, boop, boop, boop. I'm probably just going to go straight down the line here. Um, and that should be fine. And then I'll be ready for what's going to be our fun times. So yeah, you guys can go. And then we're going to need another line here, right? For the ender chests, which I did not get more ender chests. I should have. But you know me. I forget things like that. So then item routers will go here. Or at least as many as we have. Pretty good. Throw one more chest down for now. Okay. And then you're going to get the puller and sender, right? So puller, sender, stack and speeds. Cool. And then we just repeat that. So right back in a sec. And I'll get the ender chests too. Okay, so this should be pretty close to cool now. These guys didn't sound like they got goo, did they? Nope, no glue. This guy did though, right? Yep. Okay, you got all the appropriate upgrades. UI is where I left off, so sender, puller, speed that. Now I'm a little bit low on speed upgrades because gunpowder, but that's okay. That's okay. Puller, sender, because we have stack upgrades, I think we'll be fine. We'll see what happens. All right, so now let's test out timing of everything. So you should be off. So if I re-glue some redstone to you, which I think I put my redstone away. Yep. Okay. And that looks cool. All right, so let's test the timing of this whole shebang, right? So you activate. And what we should have is three steps forward because of the adjustment here, right? And then because of our changes here, it should take a few seconds for this thing to start rolling, but he won't go too early, which is, you know, absolutely. We want to make sure that there's no chance he starts moving too early because that would be like a big deal. So far, so good. Everybody's moving the way I would want them to. Now, when this thing moves down is really going to be the real test. But I think it's step two when he's going to move down now, right? Which will happen in a few seconds from now. Step two on. Step two on. Shouldn't you be on now? There we go. So maybe I can cut that back one. Yeah, I might, I might, I might do this and this just to see how that works out next time. But yes. I'm thinking I'm thinking like the step number that it's currently on is a little bit mis misidentified in uh in the in the top in one probe up there. Uh now you are giving me a little pause for concern because I might need to increase the time here within which you are running. So I might need to tweak that a little bit. Mostly because we're taking a few extra seconds to move forward and a few extra seconds to start. So I might want to bump this up to like an 80 ticks. Yeah, let's make you 80 for the loop and that'll make you a little bit longer. So now you'll take a little bit longer to go and we'll see if that's enough, right? On account mostly of the fact that, you know, it, it's taking us longer to move forward. So we need to wait a little longer before we try and move forward again. But I mean, I'm liking this, right? It's feeling pretty good. 
And I'm going to babysit this for a minute. I will let you guys know how it goes, or I'll come back when it's closer to lifting up. All right, guys, we are back. And uh, as you can see, a couple iterations I've run here, and so far, so smooth. Now, in theory, I should be able to expand this. I think my only limiting factor here is going to be the vanilla chests and how many of those I can fit on this thing. Like I said, I wish I could use, and I don't know why it doesn't work. You would think that, you know, diamond chests or something would work just as well as vanilla chests, but for some reason they hadn't. Um, but, you know, it's all good. It's all good. So we'll see what happens. Uh, so check it out. So we're, we're riding this thing, this pulley up. Everything looked great. Uh, he's nice and ready to move forward now. If we check in the back here, you'll see we're at loop 57 on the steps. So if I wanted to, I could probably shrink this down to like maybe 75 would be cool, right? Rather than 80. Um, but it doesn't take long. It's a few seconds, right? So it's four seconds per delay per, per step. So we're talking like 20 to 30 seconds here before it you know, moves forward. And then it shall, and we'll see everything behave itself, right? So that's pretty slick. I like it. I feel like this was a productive episode. We greatly expanded um, the speed at which we mine, right? We basically tripled it, almost. Slightly less than tripled. Technically slightly less than tripled it, but tripled it nonetheless, right? Pretty close to tripled it. Because moving forward three steps, as you can see, takes about a second or two. Uh, it's, it's really the going down that takes a lot of time. I might try adding a fourth or fifth row of this uh, off camera here between episodes, and then we'll just see what it looks like when we, get, when we come back next episode. But hopefully that's going to generate a lot more resources for us a lot more quickly. The other benefit is we can leave this running because chunk loaders. That was huge. That's the hugest part of today's episode was the addition of this. So I manually added this mod to my instance and then I immediately messaged Sunak here and said, hey buddy, can you add this mod to the pack for the next update? So so chunk no go bye bye should be added to the, the mod pack in the next update. If you want to add it yourselves in the meantime, feel free, uh, but it'll be there very, very shortly and uh, that should be cool. All right, so for now, I think it's a good wrapping up point for the episode. I'm gonna actually stop this bad boy from running for the moment because i want to add another couple rows here and that will like i said greatly increase the speed at which we're mining and i think that would be cool and as a reminder for every row we add we have two things we have to do one we have to consider chest storage so that might be a problem at some point we'll run out of storage chests on the on the thing um but then also we need to add another dude right here so if we add one more row we add a dude here and then he'll move forward one more block right? So then we'll be moving, so we'll have four rows, we're going to want to move forward four times, right? And then if we're going to have five rows, we're going to move forward five times, etc. So we're going to add another dude here. Um, and that's, that, this sequencer really is what's cool about this build, because it makes it so that it's very simple to add rows, right? Um, and then, yeah, and because of the way we configured this, and it resetting every time, we don't need to change this sequencer at all when we add a row because it'll continuously reset. So that's not a concern. Um, the only other thing we might need to do is bump these guys forward, obviously, and that's cool. All right, so I'm gonna play with that a little bit more off camera between episodes. Uh, for now, Delta Way signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time with hopefully a lot more resources and we can get back into that mechanism antimatter stuff. We'll see. For now, take it easy.